European Federation of Pharmaceutical Industries and Association. And its mission is to promote the emergence of more efficient and safer medicines by reinvigorating the pharmaceutical sector in Europe. To achieve its mission, IMI is launching research and developing projects as well as education and training projects with the aim to remove bottlenecks which currently hamper the, uh, drug, the, the development of new drugs by pharmaceutical companies. So we fully realize that to remove this bottleneck, we have to implement new ways to share medical pharmaceutical information, new ways to manage knowledge. And we are very grateful to HIMSS and DG IMSO to uh, give the opportunity to IMI to give you during this plenary session a sense of our vision of the future and how indeed it will be possible to improve the process of drug development by uh, developing uh, new ways of managing uh, knowledge and sharing medical information. If you want to know more about concrete achievements of IMI, some of them will be uh, present already this morning, there will be a more specific session this afternoon which will represent our annual stakeholders forum when we will uh, present ongoing projects as well as our future activities. But for this plenary session, we uh, decide to um, offer you three presentations to give you indeed uh, an idea about how uh, uh, the uh, new technologies about um, medical information and knowledge management can positively influence the pharmaceutical sector. And without further ado, I will introduce our first speaker, who is Romain Rutten, Vice President of Health Information Science at uh, Johnson & Johnson, Janssen research and development, and the title of his talk will be Unlock the value of health information for better research and improved health. Romain, please, the chair is yours. First of all, thank you, Michel, for uh, the opportunity to present to this uh, uh, audience here. Um, listening to the presentations yesterday, it's clear that there's a lot of engagement in the audience to make significant changes to the e-health uh, environment uh, towards the future. Uh, so it's a privilege for me to be able to present here to the, to the audience. Uh, Michelle already introduced me. I'm heading an integrated data services team uh, within Johnson Johnson Pharma, better known as clinical data management and also have the privilege to lead a small team uh, that is called Health Information Sciences, where we focus on how the future e-health environment is evolving, um, to learn from that and how we can participate in that, with a special focus on health, uh, health information. Uh, we heard yesterday a number of times already, and we have uh, heard it uh, again this morning, that the patient should be front and center of the final solution. Uh, and I can only confirm that in initiatives where we participate, it is uh, exactly what we see uh, also. Stakeholder behavior and adoption, where the patient is, of course, one of the most critical stakeholders, uh, will also uh, be critical for the success of a new e-health uh, ecosystem. Now, before defining or trying to define some solutions, let's look into some questions uh, that uh, I have for you. Um, if we would look forward to the future e-health environment, let's imagine a few things. Let's imagine that new treatments would be effective in 95% of the patients because we have better ways of profiling the patients and making sure that we target the right patients with our treatments. Uh, that we can reduce the number of treatment failures by 60% because we can, we can provide patients with the tools and the awareness to make sure that they can improve adherence and compliance and thereby ensuring that the treatment can be, uh, can be effective. Uh, let's imagine that we can continuously mo monitor uh, the risk-benefit profile of new treatments based on naturalistic data, giving us much more and realistic evidence on the real performance of uh, treatments uh, with the patients 
and that could also lead to engaging in discussions, in real uh, accurate discussions on pay for performance uh, models. Uh, where researchers can pull data and gain new insights for uh, disease etiologies and new uh, disease targets. Where we can optimize clinical research by 50% by using existing data rather than uh, creating new evidence by uh, doing new clinical trials. Too often we have to do new clinical trials while we feel evidence could already be available in existing data. And last but not least, where all patients and healthcare providers have access to uh, up-to-date and accurate information on existing and new treatments. We heard yesterday uh, that we still see a lot of inequity uh, of care uh, throughout the regions, especially in remote areas. I think making sure that all patients and healthcare providers have access to the latest up-to-date information could potentially also address uh, some of that. I think we can all agree that we're not there yet, so it's a nice ambition, uh, but uh, we're definitely not there. But we do see a lot of changes that are moving into, into the, right, uh, the right direction. We see increased openness between uh, the different stakeholders in the healthcare uh, system, uh, collaboration between the industry, between academia, uh, uh, payers insurance organizations. We see much more of that than we saw a few years ago. Willingness for pre-competitive collaboration. It, I think it's uh, uh, fair to say that the pharma industry uh, in general is very conservative or quite conservative and rather IP sensitive. But we also see increasing awareness within the pharma industry that we need to engage in pre-competitive collaboration because some of these complex challenges are impossible to solve uh, as a single organization. So there's almost also more willingness in that area. We try to combine uh, data across different organizations to get better and new insights uh, in diseases. Uh, we also see more cross-discipline collaboration uh, in the e-health environment. I think initially, when we started to talk about uh, e-health, we saw a lot of initiatives within the specific industries or disciplines. Uh, but today, we see much more cross-discipline collaboration because we start to realize that it's a very complex uh, uh, environment and we all need to focus on our expertise to make sure that we can bring our piece of the puzzle uh, to the uh, uh, to the final uh, the final solution if we look at the uh, uh, journey of a person or a, um, a patient um, that goes from prenatal and, and birth up to uh, late stage treatment and, and final death what we expect towards the future is that we will continuously and routinely collect uh, information on the patients by a number of devices that uh, we have some examples out there, but that's not intended to be, to be an exhaustive list, it's just an example. But we expect that we will routinely collect more and more information, and that information is going to be used or will be used uh, to define optimal strategies uh, to maintain wellness, uh, prevent disease, uh, finally define the right treatment, make sure that we have and support adherence and follow-up of that treatment, and finally also can help with assisted living um, for, the, for the elderly. Uh, we heard yesterday about uh, a new initiative, the European Innovation Partnership um, pilot um, on active and healthy aging with the objective of increasing uh, the healthy life years with two years by the age of uh, by the time of 2020 uh, i think it is obvious that in order to achieve that uh, objective better use and optimal use of available information is going to be a critical or a key component uh, of that um, of that solution um, what we also see is that within pharma and that's a little bit that's depicted on the bottom uh, rather than focusing on just therapies and new drugs, we also start to see more models that uh, involve different components where diagnostics and therapies are combined and also more and more information components are added so that we can provide integrated solutions uh, to the needs of the patients rather than uh, ther just therapies and, uh, and medications. Now in order to achieve that, um, we obviously need uh, a common or a platform where we um, can exchange the information and more important, like we heard before, 
not only exchange the information, but interpret the information in the, in the correct way. Um, and please do not overinterpret the visual. It's not intended to depict the solution. It's more intended to depict uh, the, the functionality. I think a platform like this is going to be key uh, to get to the world that we imagined uh, a few slides ago. Um, I don't know whether people attended the presentations yesterday, but we heard from the CIO of uh, Asclepios that um, he explained about the digital natives and how they are uh, highly efficient in downloading tunes from iTunes or videos from YouTube and how, how they take full benefit of the uh, digital uh, revolution. And he used his daughter as an example of that. And I think that's all true, of course. But I think one of the main reasons why it's working so well in that environment is that when his daughter is downloading a tune from an iTunes or a video from YouTube, she doesn't have to wonder whether it will play on her device or whether the video will show on the device. It will, because that industry or that has managed to define the standards in a way that people do not have to uh, bother about it. So people, the, that is interoperable, that information can be exchanged and they know exactly that it's going to work. I think if we want to get to the same uh, seamless operation in the e-health environment, I think standardization and semantic interoperability, like mentioned before, are going to be key components of that, uh, of that environment. Um, I think it's obvious if we talk about the common platform and standards for access to patient information, everything needs to be surrounded by the right ethics and the private, uh, privacy and security discussions, of course. As mentioned before, we will collect uh, routinely information uh, during a person's life. Healthcare providers in discussion uh, with patients will be, be able to use that information to, to decide on the best uh, treatment or prevention of uh, uh, diseases. Uh, we also heard a lot yesterday about the empowered patient. I think this is also an environment towards the future where we will see that patients having access to this kind of information will be more informed and better informed and will be engaging in a discussion with the healthcare provider to decide on the best treatment. Also will be able to follow up and to monitor uh, for themselves how they're, uh, how they're doing. The healthcare industry could also benefit, of course, from the uh, information to discover new, uh, new targets and also accelerate the development, but also um, not in the least to also send information back to the framework. I don't think it should be a one-way street where we use the information to improve on and lead. But if we have a platform that allows for that, it would also allow us to send relevant information of the products uh, on efficacy and safety back into the framework that, that can be used by the healthcare providers and the patient uh, uh, to monitor. Healthcare regulators can also obviously use the platform to uh, define new policies and of course also payers and insurers can get to more evidence uh, and better information to discuss uh, pay for performance uh, uh, models uh, moving forward. Now how will we get there? Um, I think it's also uh, mentioned uh, a few times today it's going to be evolution rather than um, than a revolution we feel. Uh, it's not only having the framework available, it's also having it adopted by all the critical stakeholders that play an important role um, in the framework. Um, the keynote speaker of this conference, uh, Professor Barabasi, introduced us into network research and what I found highly relevant to our business is what the importance is of the hubs uh, in the network, uh, how important that they are to make the network uh, function. I think the important hubs in our network are obviously the patients and the caregivers and the stakeholders that we mentioned in the, uh, in the slide before. Um, patients should, or the solution should also be patient-centric. I think that we mentioned, we heard that before, we should listen and involve the patient in the solution that we, uh, uh, that we develop. Multi-stakeholder implementation or involvement and especially commitment. Public-private uh, collaborations and this is where I would like to mention IMI. I think IMI is giving us an excellent platform where industry and uh, um, uh, public academia, SMEs can collaborate and work together on a sustainable, uh, sustainable solution. I think what we also need, I think it's mentioned in the last uh, bullet, a need 
for open-minded, innovative and disruptive approaches. Not target the short-term benefit, but really target what is the potential of an environment like that uh, to force towards the future. So really think about uh, uh, the long term. We already see a number of initiatives in these uh, areas, and I think we should capitalize on them as much as possible, learning from them, and build on that uh, moving, uh, moving forward. Um, JNG as an organization is already involved in one of those initiatives that is uh, led by uh, AstraZeneca. It's the EHR for CR initiative. It's a specific initiative that will develop a platform and a business model for reusing EHR uh, information in support of, um, of clinical trials. And this is an effort where uh, we have, I think, about 30 or even more than 30 participants involved in this, uh, in this specific um, initiative. We're also involved um, and highly committed to a new initiative that we are um, <coughs> co-leading with uh, our uh, colleagues from GSK that will build on the learnings from EHR for CR. Um, and the intention is that we uh, want to build a sustainable framework towards the future where we can have interaction with, uh, with patient level health data. Now the picture looks a bit complicated, but let me try to explain uh, what we uh, mean with that. If you look at the vertical green bars, those are specific research questions that we want to answer. Um, very often, those research questions uh, require access to uh, specific health level or to large volumes of uh, patient level health information. And what we see often is that discussions to get access to that information are within the different uh, projects and are not optimally leveraged, leveraged between all those different uh, projects. So the proposal that we have uh, I put forward now is that next to the answering the individual questions, we also want to make sure that we create a framework by which we learn from the discussions and uh, building blocks that we have in one initiative and also reuse them in the other initiative, not starting from scratch, but enrich them, make them better and make sure that at the end uh, we come up with a sustainable platform where we can answer new research questions if they uh, become available. We also would like to extend this uh, initiative into the next call, uh, making sure that we really can continue to build on it. We feel that this is giving us an opportunity to um, progressively uh, get to that uh, final and ultimate solution that we, uh, that we are looking for. Uh, we are very committed as an organization uh, towards this initiative because we feel that we can uh, collaborate with uh, academia and SMEs and also help shape uh, uh, the environment uh, of the future um, and hopefully um, that will bring us a little closer to the world that we imagined in the in the first slide where we would have where we could answer yes to a number of these uh, of these questions thank you thank you very much uh, Romain for this very key presentation and for emphasizing what IMI is currently doing and will do in the future. We have time for one or two questions. If there are not perhaps just one question, pre-competitive research is a concept which has been primarily developed by large companies. And I would like you perhaps to elaborate a bit and to get your definition of pre-competitive research, which could be applied not only to large companies, but also to your partners, for example, your partners in the IMI project that you mentioned. But I think in, in the... I think pre-competitive research, I think we, we see, especially in the e-health environment, it's a very complex environment with a lot of components that need to be, uh, to be put in place. Um, a number of these components are not uh, getting or giving um, uh, additional competitive uh, benefits to the organization that are far too complex to solve uh, on our own. So I think that's why we uh, feel that the complexity is such and there's not a real competitive advantage for us to solve this on our own. That's where we need to uh, collaborate with, with uh, other organizations.